Hey Jen, so I'm here at the Fort Community and Performing Arts Center in Dearborn and this is the place to be this Saturday morning. You've got tens and thousands of antique glassware, depression glassware items as you can see right here and they're just absolutely beautiful. I gotta say I'm a bit scared, I hope I don't break anything because some of them are really expensive and you know what, just to get an idea of what it is and what the price point is, I've got Jonathan with me, Jonathan Furman, who's going to be walking me through, first of all, Jonathan, what is depression glass? So our club and collectors define it as really any American-made glassware that was produced from the 1920s till about the 1950s or 60s. Now, I'm looking at all these beautiful pieces over here. How, like, so how does one, as, for example, like if you look at this color, it's green yep. and, and it's, this is, I would like to say, amber. Is, are these natural or how did they get the color? So all glass really starts out as melted sand, silica, clear, and then they add different chemicals to get the colors. So they might add um, depleted uranium to get greens, there's cobalts to get blues, and it really just, all these different chemicals are what give us the really beautiful hues of color. And how do you determine the age of these items? Um, so it really depends. A lot of these patterns actually were so popular that they were produced for many, many years. It wasn't like going to a store today where you're buying some dishes and it may not be, it may dis be discontinued in six months. So a lot of these patterns were even manufactured for 15 and 20 years. So there's a lot of, of breath to that. And there's a lot of great reference books to kind of figure out what time periods everything's from. Now, I know just before the interview, you pulled out two pieces for me where you wanted to show. I mean, just to get, I think it's right there. This. Yeah. So just walk me through, how does one sort of, when they come over here, what are they looking for? Yeah, so um, this is a pattern. Uh, all these glassware patterns have a lot of pressed um, decorations to them, and that's because at the time of production, this was kind of a lower quality glassware. It wasn't the stuff that you would be buying at Hudson's or whatever. So there's a lot of patterns in the glass to kind of make up for the fact that it's not, you know, the best quality. Um, and then within patterns, there's just a lot of variances in what things are worth. This is a really affordable pattern called Cameo. It's got a little um, ballerina kind of in a, in a um, circular motion here and um, dinner plates here are $16. You can probably get some cups and saucers for 10, but there's also rare pieces. So this uh, cream soup bowl here is 165. So it really runs the gamut. There's a little bit of something in every pattern that's a little bit more rare or unique. And when it comes to selecting these items, and I know for like an avid collector, they know exactly what they're picking, but what about me? Like I'm for the, if I wanted to start, you know, getting into this and what would you recommend? Where do I start? You come to a glass show like this, um, you know, if you have no experience in it, you will walk these aisles and find something that just appeals to you and strikes your eye and say, oh, that either goes well with my current home decor and maybe it's just, maybe you don't want to, you know, do an entertaining and, and set a full table. Maybe you just want a cool vase or a pair of candlesticks for your mantle. Something will speak to you when you come here and that's how you know. Awesome, Jonathan. Okay, so Jen, we'll be speaking to Jonathan uh, on the, about 9, 9.30 and getting a better idea once you purchase some of these fantastic pieces. How are you going to set up your dinner table? Because the holiday season's coming up, and I know you're inviting me for Christmas and Thanksgiving, so unless I invited myself. Well, for <laughs> Jen, us, I was just say? thinking, this is going to be your first Thanksgiving in Detroit. I'm thinking maybe you need an entirely new kitchen set, and what perfect place to be this morning. Oh, so, so, you, so you're basically inviting yourself to my place for, <laughs> for how about, Thanksgiving dinner. How about you dinner. cook right, no and, and I'll I bring a side, right? That's fair, right? You can do the, the main cooking. You'll have all the fresh glasses there, and I'll bring the sides. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Let's do this. You're on, Faraz. We'll check back in with you in our next half hour. Looking forward to everything else, Faraz. See you